Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 2080 watt pure sine wave inverter from Junpaul. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. All right, we have a box in a box. And when you open up this box, here's what to expect. It looks like we have, we have two two gauge cable, which is great. We have some Cat5e uh, communication cable. I'm guessing that's for a remote. We have this box right here. This is probably the remote. Yep, here's the remote right here. We have our user's manual documentation and also a product overview. All right, and then we have the inverter. Right out of the packaging, I like the way this thing feels. It feels very solid. The design is very nice and it has like a, uh, like a, a, dusted, like a dusted coating. So it, the feel of it is very good. Um, and they use like, it's not just cheap aluminum. This is actually pretty, pretty good quality. Uh, if we look at the back first, we can see our positive and our negative posts for the 12 volt connections. And we have two cooling fans. Now I like the way that these posts are really far apart. So there's no way of accidentally touching them together. And they have these protective covers on them, which is always a big bonus. Uh, on the sides, they do have these, uh, oh, like these, they have these feet and they're rubberized. So it, it will really reduce down the uh, the vibration, which is actually really nice. And they don't oh, oh they do and they and they slide right off. So if you don't want them, uh, you don't need them. Okay, on the front you can see there is a toggle switch for either power on, which is a, a constant on all the time, or you can have it powered on just by the remote. Uh, we have our communication port for our remote right here. Uh, we also have a USB 2.1 amp. Um, it's a USB-A port. Uh, we have a power light. We have some dip switches right here. I'm not really sure what those are for. We'll find out. Uh, we have a hardwire connection, which is always good to see. Uh, that's surprising on a uh, 2000 watt or 2080 watt inverter. Uh, you usually see those in the, uh, in the 3000 range. So it's nice to see one of those as well. And then we have our AC outputs right here. Uh, they are 20 amp receptacles and um, and it's a GFCI connection. So that's that's really nice to see. There's just, it seems like there's a lot of protections built into this inverter. So let's go ahead and connect this inverter up to a battery. And to test this inverter, we will be using the cabling that came with it. Now, looking at this cable, it's pretty nice. First of all, it's the right gauge. It's a two gauge cable and it's actually copper. You can see right inside that it's actually copper. So they didn't use al aluminum wiring. These are the real deal. So uh, I would feel fine using these with this inverter. And when connecting up your inverter, you always want to put your cable on first and then your washer and then your lock washer and then your nut to tighten it down. And after you tighten it down, give it a good shake. This cable should not move at all. All right, we now have the inverter connected to this Red Odeo 12 volt, 140 amp hour battery. The reason I did that is because this battery has 150 amp BMS continuous. So that is perfect for a 2000 plus watt inverter, which this is 2080. Uh, but let's go ahead and just turn this on without the remote and see what happens. All right, we get a green power light and the fans on the back run for about two to three seconds. And now the uh, inverter is ready to go. But let's go ahead and connect up the remote and see what happens there. All right, and looking at this remote, it's actually very well built. It's not, the, I don't think it's plastic, it's metal. I know the back is metal. Uh, it feels like aluminum, which is very nice. It's very, uh, very sturdy. And then it give, they give you uh, 16 feet of Cat5e cable. And what's nice is this Cat5e cable is very standardized. So you could easily probably buy more. So that way you could actually connect this remote to anywhere that you want. All right, we're going to connect up the remote. And it probably won't do anything when we connect it.
Okay, and now let's go ahead and put it, uh, we're gonna switch the power to the remote side and see what happens. All right, nothing happened, but let's go ahead and turn it on from here. And again, it turns right on and we get a nice display of everything that's going on. Um, it shows that we are working with uh, 50 hertz at 120 volts. And the voltage of the battery is 13.2 volts. There's a little pure sine wave symbol right here. Uh, and that's the watts coming out, which is zero right now because we have nothing plugged in. And uh, then we have a little battery monitor right here. And it does say 50 hertz, so we'll have to switch that somehow. And it's probably with these dip switches right here. So let's actually switch these. I'm going to switch it from, because uh, right now it's set on S2. Let's switch it to S1 and see what happens. Yep, and just like that, it switched over to 60 hertz when we select S1 instead of S2. And then if we go from S3 to S4, the voltage drops from 120 volts to 110 volts. So that's nice that you can pick and choose what you want. But I want 60 hertz at 120 volts. Let's go ahead and get a, a multimeter and check these out to make sure that they're accurate. All right, first let's check the DC side. It says 13.2 volts. And I'm getting 13.13 volts. So that's pretty close. And then let's go ahead and check the AC side. And I'm getting 119.6 volts on the AC side. So that is exactly right as well. And let's go ahead and check the hard wire just to make sure it works. Again, 119.6 volts. And right now we are pulling 0.64 amps uh, on standby. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a 100 amp load on. So that'll give it about 1200 watts or so. And uh, we're going to go ahead and watch the voltage, see if we have a voltage drop. And also, I'm just going to let this run for like five minutes just to make sure that nothing weird happens. So let's go ahead and plug this in. All right, our voltage is at 119.9, so almost exactly 120 volts. Let's go ahead and turn this on high. All right, the fans on the back turn on automatically under this load. Our voltage has actually gone up, so it's actually at 120 volts now, so which that, that's great. And this, uh, this monitor shows that we're using about 1164 watts. So I'm gonna let this run for four or five minutes and I'll come back and let you know. All right, well, Keats found out that uh, after five minutes, this inverter uh, did not have any issues whatsoever powering this uh, 1100 watt load. So we're gonna go ahead and bump it up by applying another 100 amps and just to see where it gets to the point where it actually shuts off. Okay, next we are going to be powering this heat gun again, which will give us around 1200 watts. And we're also gonna turn on this Elite Gourmet hot plate, which, it gives, which will give us about 1,000 watts. So that'll be about 2,200 watts that we'll be pushing through this inverter. And let's see what happens. That's a lot of watts. It is a lot of watts. Okay, ready? Let's turn on the heat gun. Let's go. Actually, let's turn on the Elite Gourmet first. Do you wanna turn that on, Keaton? Mm -hmm. Keep going. That's Keep going, yep. Okay. Uh, we have 984 watts going through the inverter right now. The fans have turned on. So let's go ahead and turn on the heat gun on high. The inverter is beeping and it ran a load of about 2100 watts for about 10 seconds. And then the inverter shut off exactly the way that it should. All right, and then after about 30 seconds, the inverter will automatically turn back on. And one of the things I like about this inverter is that when you do put a 50% a, a load on it, like with this heat gun, the fans will turn on on the back. And then when you turn it off, the fans continue to run uh, to make sure that all the heat that's inside the inverter has dissipated. And then they turn off. All right, well, I wanted to open this up to show you guys the insides because I 
I was told that the capacitors are like solid state capacitors, but this thing, the, the cover will not come off. I've unscrewed 10 screws on the sides in order to get it off and it still is not, is not budging. And I don't want to destroy the covering on this inverter uh, in order to open it up. So yeah, it is kind of unfortunate. So I'm going to go ahead and screw it all back together. I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so what do I think of the 12 volt June Paw 2080 watt pure sine wave inverter? Well, I like the features that this inverter has. First of all, it feels very well built. Uh, that is without being able to open the cover, which is unfortunate, but just the feeling of it alone, uh, it, it feels really good. I like the fact that it gives you that GFCI plug that's at 20 amps, and it does give you a hardwire option, which is pretty rare for a 2000 watt inverter. The addition to the remote, which is nice. It's not just a plastic remote. It's actually like an aluminum, aluminum metal body remote, which gives you plenty of information. And some features that it says it has is solid state capacitors, which I don't know anything about capacitors, but I believe that is a next level up from regular capacitors. <laughs> and then also uh, it says it has dual ball bearing uh, fans and they are rated for 50,000 hours of use. So I believe this inverter could last you uh, quite a long time. So if you have any questions about the Junepaw 12 volt 2080 watt pure sine wave inverter, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item and everything else I used in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.